Hello, everyone. We're starting right on time. Thank you for coming today, especially after the holidays in the U.S. anyway. I'm not sure uh, what Canada does, I guess, but of course we had a big celebration and so that provided some um, ideas to talk about today. We're going to be talking about burns and wounds and healing, that kind of thing. So I appreciate you coming. Uh, does anybody have any kind of a little testimony or something they want to share before we get started? You're certainly welcome to do that and then we'll be able to talk more towards the end also if you have something to add. You can unmute yourself if you want to, you know, do anything like that. That is just fine. Linda, I've yes. been used, my legs have wanted to break out on me because they're get rather large and swell up with cellulitis and whatever. And so I've been using all the wound and healing stuff forever and ever and ever. And I think it's finally kicking in and starting to clean it up here for me. So oh, it, good. I use it at least twice a day. I just start with the top of the wound and regeneration, let that whole thing run two or three times a day. And plus everything else too, and bacteria, you name it. Yes. But I well, am right. over it and I know this watch is definitely helping. Perfect, because that's what we're going to be kind of mentioning and talking about today. And there is a cellulitis, um, you know, frequency. So uh, all those kind of things add together and, and work together. So without much, you know, other go else going on, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I've already kind of introduced the topic. But this way, you'll have something to share with someone if you, you know, uh, don't know exactly what the person needs or why they're interested in the wave watch, but we have accumulated over 60 some different um, sessions, I guess you could say, on using the wave watch. And so they're, you know, topic. So if somebody has a particular problem, they could kind of peruse the, the choices and see if they could find a topic that they're interested in learning a little bit more in depth, especially if they are, are kind of on the fence about getting the wave watch, that kind of thing. But anyway, we're going to be talking about burns and wounds. Okay, let me know if you can't see the screen or can't hear me. I clicked a lot of buttons, but uh, we do have a good morning from Glendale, Wisconsin. Hello there. Thanks for joining, Marie. Really appreciate it. Um, so today is the day after what I think is one of the worst days that we have to burn ourselves and hurt ourselves, obviously. So that's kind of why I picked this topic and and. Uh, had some information to share with you that we could relate back to the wave watch. So um, just to cover some of the basics like we have to do, don't forget that we have over 60 teaching segments about the wave watch and wave watch frequency fanatics is what you find on Facebook. And I, I think that's really an apt sentence because um, or an apt title because uh, so many people are becoming fanatical about their wave watch. They're wearing them 24 hours a day because they see that they can help with so many different things. And I even had an, um, an 80 year old, um, the testimony was conveyed to my husband, but she basically said that she's kind of cleaned out her um, medicine cabinet, you know, and she doesn't have as many things in it as anymore because of all the concerns, even on our um, over the counter ideas. Obviously, if you're listening, there's so much in the news now about acetaminophen and uh, lawsuits with that and autism. And so even though we've been told forever and forever that these over-the-counter things are safe, there's been more and more questions. So we do know that frequencies are safe. They are the same thing as using our voice, singing a song, doing a prayer, chanting, that kind of thing. And those have never been known to be harmful. So maybe if you can use your wave watch more, uh, you can, you know, change some other things that you're doing for um, taking care of yourself. And of course, 
I just made a kind of a statement about trying to clean out your medicine cabinet a little bit. And I was talking about over the counter things. But again, don't forget that I can't say that we're diagnosing or treating or curing. You are the person who's doing that. You're using your own self care ideas. And part of this little uh, bl blur or blip each week is to give you some ideas on how to use it. And of course, there are some names in the booklet and on the website that are disease labels. And that's only because we have to be able to compare and be talking about the same thing. So very important that, to let you know that we're not diagnosing anything. We're just using that label so that you can dig just a little bit deeper. And uh, gosh, I... I, I'm talking about you now, Lynn. I think maybe you you <laughs> you must have known, but uh, somebody sent me a um, a link to a product that is for mosquitoes, and it basically has just a couple of frequencies on it. And there there are a couple of different ones now. And the one I know that I saw was in the forty dollar price range, and it had one frequency. So that's a way to compare and to talk about the Wave Watch if you are interested in that, you know, sharing with anybody, because here's one tool that's on the wrist and it has one frequency. Well, the Wave Watch has eight hundred and forty nine other frequencies and still does work with the mosquitoes. And I've had several people give me testimonies on saying that mosquito repel really works, you know. So other good things. We're not connected to the internet. I think it's cost effective. There's no monthly fee. Everybody can use it. Even our pets, you know, dogs and cats. And again, somebody gave me a picture of their duck that they used it on. So lots of information about the Wave Watch and why it could be useful for you. Hey, a day late, but happy Independence Day. And that's what it looked like all over town last night. And I don't know what it was like in your town or if it was very quiet, but I had to go inside and put, you know, headphones or, you know, earmuffs on because it was so loud in just a neighborhood that I was in, in Olathe, Kansas. So it sounds like we've used fireworks more and more um, just recently. And there was a connotation that I read on the internet how fireworks are getting more and more popular. And I'm sorry, I actually forgot to find how out the dollar price of how much we spend on fireworks every year. <laughs> but what I found out was how many people who were injured, you know. So their stats in 2020 are saying about 15,000 people, you know, were injured in emergency rooms because of fireworks. So I don't know how long it'll take us to find out how many were injured last night, <laughs> but obviously there were thousands of people that were injured from fireworks. So the two leading sources of injuries from the fireworks are the firecrackers, obviously, and the sparklers. And again, last night, somebody had a chain of firecrackers. I don't know how they do those. You know, the younger children, of course, 14 and under, have been uh, using the firecrackers a lot. They think it's really neat. And they're the ones that tend to get injured with that. But I also saw another idea that our, you know, 20-year-olds were getting injured more also. And maybe they were buying more fireworks because they were just darn bored <laughs> and they wanted more to do and maybe a way to, you know, um, just get out and um, relieve some pressure just a little bit because they have been so cooped up and uh, so many things have been going on in their lives. So that was another idea that that's why the sale of firecrackers has just skyrocketed. So if you know somebody that was burned from the firecrackers, you know, from sparklers, from anything, there's quite a bit of information on the internet and some of it goes back and forth a little bit. But I think this little chart really covers the basics of it. And I was really glad that I, you know, looked at this a little bit and, um, you know, could kind of cover some ideas, go over some ideas in my mind also. But, you know, again, they're saying you can put your hand under cool water, but not to use ice water. And I do know of a lot of people who put an ice pack on immediately. And many sources were saying not to do the ice pack, but just cool water. Okay. And then, of course, you could use an antibiotic treatment, but that's what we're going to talk about today. So some people do have those in their, um, you know, medicine cabinet. 
they're all ready to go, but lots of other ideas. Uh, make a cool compress. You know, you could do that. Now, again, I've already kind of commented on uh, take the um, over the pain or over the counter pain reliever. Sometimes we're not quite sure that that's what we should be doing. So um, that does kind of make you wonder a little bit on whether how, you know, whether we want to take the acetaminophen or what we want to be taking. So uh, another idea was to apply aloe vera juice. And I was so glad to see that one pop up because, you know, that's what I was taught to do as a child was to use that aloe vera juice. And I have lots of aloe vera plants in my house and we just called it the burn plant. So I hope you've discovered that too and have that handy and available. Um, something we used to do was, you know, put butter on it. That's not a very good one in, uh, at this point in time. If you still have that in your mind, you probably shouldn't do that. I didn't know about egg whites being used, but that evidently is a no-no, doesn't work that well. And has anybody heard of using toothpaste? <laughs> I have not heard of that one. Um, and don't pop the blisters. But I did see one site that said to pop the blisters. So I was a little bit confused and I would be very, very careful about opening my skin up. Actually, I kind of agreed with this one. But another well-known one said, yes, do pop the blister. So read carefully before you decide to do anything like that. And then I've already talked about don't use ice in cold water. That's a little bit too, um, too much of a change in that particular idea there. So I am ready for the next screen here. Okay. Everything has disappeared on me. I was trying to see everybody's. There we go. Finally. I picked up a couple of other charts. And these are similar to what we're talking about with everything that was done last night. We had a lot of injuries. You just know it. Uh, these are some images of the stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four burns, and then a few more ideas in a different way. Same way with skin wounds. If the wound is deep, if it looks like it's infection, infected, if there's dirt in the wound, or even a bite wound. And just a, you know, a quick chart to show you, and this is from Vector Start. But some information there that we, you know, sometimes just a chart, a you know, visual gives us a few more ideas. And you're in a hurry if your grandchild is hurt or burned, you know, so you're going to be looking and trying to remember what you saw. So it's good to cover it again. So these are the self-care ideas that are on the wave watch for burns and wounds. And I thought they uh, we that we did a pretty good job. So one of the first things that you can do is go to uh, self-care and wounds and burns. So I, uh, there's burns and radiation burns in that particular choice right there. So how many of you saw that idea last night? Somebody staying in there with their sparkler, you know, and pretty soon you could have somebody in your family wounded a little bit, you know, or burned. So go right away to burns and radiation burns. Another idea would be to go to self-care and towards the end of the self-care category, there is a folder called wounds and healing. And so you're going to go to healing and generation, regeneration. You'll play inflammation, pain, and trauma, regeneration and healing, wounds and healing and injuries, you know, wounds penetrating. So there's all those ideas, and I wouldn't hesitate one bit to play through all of those. So you don't have to make a choice unless you are a really good muscle tester or have some means to, you know, intuitively or you're praying and asking God for, you know, which frequency to use right away. All of these are going to be good, and they're about an eight-minute frequency so just set your watch so that it goes on the double arrows. You know, don't forget, I talk about this every time. The lower left corner right here 
is where you're going to be seeing those choices. It's kind of hard to angle my arm here, right? But that's the lower left corner so that you can put it on double arrows and go through all of those. Now, another quick one is the very first one that's on the watch, and that would be chronic. And then under inflammation, pain, and trauma, which I think is the most important frequency on the wave watch, uh, you can play that one just with ease. You can loop it, play it a long period of time. There's also a separate one for inflammation and a separate one for pain. So play through all of those, or if you can tell that one of them in particular is very help, helpful, then make it loop with the double arrows. And again, you're going to go to the lower left-hand corner and use those double arrows to make one play for a longer period of time. Now, I didn't get to the real stats. We were just talking about last night and how there's so many possibilities of somebody getting burned, you know, 16,000 in, the, in two, uh, 2020. So the World Health Organization says that approximately 11 million people suffer from burn wounds every year. I'm sorry, I think I was kind of mumbling there. 11 million people have burns every year. And 180,000 will die because of those injuries. So it gets worse and worse when we're talking about burns in general. Now, I couldn't pull any statistics out on how many people died from a firecracker wound. You know, I think I, I saw 12 to 15, but I wasn't quite sure uh, of ex exactly the idea. So I didn't, you know, put this here, but out of the 16,000, normally the firecrackers are not going to cause um, life-threatening wounds. But other kinds of burns obviously are. So let's take a couple of looks at these and see if we can, you know, just kind of review with you some things that you could find on the Wave Watch that would be very helpful. So if somebody has a burn, and that burn changes really quickly, there's a difference in the wound um, that can tell you that the person may have an infection setting in or even sepsis. So I would go to germs. If somebody that you know is working with a burn or a wound and make sure they're playing bacteria general and then bacteria and mycosis, and then did the detox and limps, and then just detox by itself. So that's a general starting point to try to prevent infection. Then also in the germ category at the very bottom, because it's not in quote unquote, it's not a germ, but that's where you kind of want to catch it, uh, is antiseptic one and antiseptic two, and then infection and then sepsis. So those would be some. So you may want to build yourself a favorites list with these ideas if somebody that you know is using the Wave Watch for a pretty severe idea. Um, and to cover the idea again, if it says uh, an idea number one, number two, basically those are just different frequencies. They may have been measured by a different person, a different tool but very, very similar, just a few little different frequencies that could make a difference in your healing. And don't forget, it's not gonna hurt even if maybe antiseptic general one, maybe that's not the one that your body needs, but it's not going to hurt you to play it. It's just like listening to a song. And a lot of times I'll, I'll kind of laugh and say, it's like listening to Elvis or listening to an impersonator. It doesn't mean that one or the other is better. Elvis was just more popular and was in a different time period. So the same way with antiseptic one and two, they're just different frequencies, different ideas can be just as good. And sometimes you will feel something. So um, if you do feel anything while you're wearing the Wave Watch, take that as a notice that it could be doing some good for you. 
and try to open your wave watch by pressing a second on the very bottom button and that will activate your black screen so that you can swipe across and then you can see what is playing. It's pretty important to do that. And then you might want to isolate that and play that one for a particular time because your body just told you which one was making some changes over the other one. And, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes people will say, oh, yeah, I felt a frequency go up my arm. You know, I just felt it immediately. And some people will say, no, I've never felt anything, even though it was playing a lot of different frequencies. So there is not a specific time to run these. Um, that is a major question that I get. You can't, I can't tell you. I don't know the severity of the problem. Um, but, you know, my main theme would be if you feel something, run that one over and over again. Maybe even loop it all night long if you have a pretty severe injury that you're concerned about. So if we are uh, worried about a burn, these would be some ideas that would come to mind. You know, if you've got a, a burn that blisters and fills with fluid, you're more open to an infection. So make sure you're playing the infection frequencies, playing the bacterial ones. Um, if the skin changes in color, and I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not trying to tell you this. I'm just trying to tell you that this is from Oxford, you know, clinic. And these are the things that they put up to remind you of what a, an infected burn could be. Um, there's a, a change in, the again, the color. It could be come swell, swelled and have a purple discoloration. The skin could get thicker. And you could even have a green discharge or pus. And I think most of us kind of know these in, you know, instinctively. And you might have a fever. So all that tells you is that you are really starting to have some problems with that infection, whether it came from a firecracker last night, you know, or whether it's from a burn where you burned your hand. It can go either way, uh, you know, just when you're cooking or you're on the grill. We don't know sometimes when these burns and wounds can become problematic. So, uh, you know, consult with your doctor, definitely talk to your doctor and make sure that you are having it all covered. And that is a theme that I try to say. You can't just rely on one thing. I'm not saying the Wave Watch is a be-all, end-all. I'm just saying there's lots of ways to use it. But you also have to cover some other areas and make sure that you are paying attention to a wound and a burn if you have those changes. Um, these are some you know, images I was able to capture. Uh, you know, get to a doctor, protect yourself until then. That's a different way to think about it. Protect yourself until then with natural ideas. I mean, you've got your watch right away. You may not be able to get into the doctor for three or four days. You know, I don't know. Uh, so start working with some natural ideas right away. Like number one is the aloe vera plant. Go to your house and get the aloe vera off. Number two, you know, might be get your wave watch on, punch a button. If you already have your wave watch on, just go to town with it. Number three, you know, we kind of went over those. So make sure that you are protecting yourself several different ways. So here's another one. And they're saying it started out with a little tiny um, area. And then all of a sudden it puckered and pulled down and changed like this. So that was a dangerous burn idea. Now, why is this so important? I'm not sure that it really just jumped out at me until I, you know, I read this particular one. Whoops, I'm going to jump here where it is. Um, this is what happens that I guess I hadn't really thought about so much, even in children. You know, this can go deep. This bacteria, and that's what sepsis is, of course, but, you know, it kind of hits you when you see it in a different way. And that's what this particular screen did to me. But uh, bacteremia is an infection in the bloodstream. And that's when staph enters the bloodstream. You might have some fever, and low blood pressure. And then that bacteria travels throughout your body and causes infections. So that ties it back. This is the sepsis idea. So your internal organs, 
such as your brain, your heart, and your lungs can be affected. Uh, bones and muscles. And then even people who have uh, pacemakers and artificial joints, that bacteria can go right through the bloodstream and really cause some problems. So that's why we need to be monitoring those wounds a little bit easier or, or a little bit more often. And I know I've said this a couple of times, I'm not for sure where I learned this, but we are having more and more trouble today with wounds and small burns that we would not have had trouble with in years past, simply because of our 5G or 4G, whatever you wanna say, our um, EMFs. There is solid evidence that those EMFs are allowing bacteria, Lyme's disease, all kinds of infections to actually uh, progress and to be much more potent and increase by 800%. That was the terminology I saw, especially applied to Lyme's disease, that Lyme's, you know, is just blowing out of control because these EMFs are feeding it. So that's another reason I'm really proud of the Wave Watch that we are not cooked, hooked. <laughs> I can't talk today, that we are not hooked to the internet. So very important. Gonna go back a couple of slides now. So this is the picture. So even if you have something like this, it changes from one idea to worse. It's obviously not getting better. It's going in and there can be some problems. And that's why that needs to be monitored. You need to get to the doctor. While you're waiting to get to the doctor, you know, make sure that you're using some ideas on the Wave Watch or some kind of an you know, antibiotic cream, whatever you have. So the most common organisms that uh, cause this infection or sepsis are staph problems. Now, Pseudomonas was another bacterial infection, but I did not have it categorized individually. So it would only be covered in bacteria general. So that would cover it somewhat, although it may not be the exact specific frequency of Pseudomonas. But do remember that years ago, Hulda Clark was able to measure frequencies and she was basically telling us that different pathogens are basically in the same frequency range. So all the bacteria might be in this frequency. The viruses might be in a higher frequency. You know, but parasites might be in a lower frequency, but they kind of congregate in those frequencies. So that's what the bacteria general does is cover it with a frequency that would be known to be um, quote unquote, self-destructive, uh, hopefully against bacteria by providing a resonant frequency that would make those ideas um, resonate until they self-amplify and just fall apart. That's the whole idea when we say resonant. We means It means that we're sending in an identical frequency to the problem that's in your body and those two frequencies that are the same meet and they will just again, self-amplify and fall apart. And you've heard that concept before. They talk about soldiers marching over a bridge and causing the same vibration that the, that the bridge has. And that they have, they in China, they've actually taught soldiers to march at a different cadence when they cross a bridge so that it's not the same frequency and the bridge doesn't fall down on them. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> what? a description of frequencies, the resonance, the self-amplification, and how something would fall apart when two exact frequencies are meeting. So again, if I repeat myself, they had to teach them a different cadence to create a different frequency when they cross bridges. Who would have known? I like to have little, uh, unusual little tidbits. So the opposite idea would be self-care. You could go to staff. It, it is labeled staff and strep at this time. And so we have staff comprehensive, again, staff infections, staff and strep, and then a little bit more strep infections, strep infections general, and fever. So you could concentrate on the staff ones, but it's not going to hurt to concentrate on or to also run through some of the other frequencies. 
And those, again, are very helpful when you are treating a wound or a burn wound type, type thing, either way. And all of this started just because of our Independence Day. So I hope everybody had a great Independence Day. And you're not, hopefully you don't know anybody. That's one of those statistics. But if you do, you've got the wave watch and other ideas. So to go just a little bit deeper, once you're ready to get that uh, wound worked on, you can go to organs and then you would uh, open that folder, locate skin, and then uh, open up the skin folder and then you'll see restore. So under restore is all of these ideas. So there are seven different ideas and uh, you know bruises, cell restoration, elastin restoration, regeneration and healing, um, RNA and DNA restoration. Now that's a very poor, important one. It is under skin, but that could be used for many, many ideas. So that might be one to put in your playlist and save that so that you play that a little bit more often. We've got a lot of things going on with RNA and DNA now that we can all talk about, I'm sure. Um, we also have skin collagen restoration and tissue restoration. So all of these would be great ideas to run, you know, when you're trying to get that wound to heal. Um, when you go out of the restore segment under skin, the first two underneath just skin are bacteria, infections, and cellulitis. So a couple more ideas in the skin folder that would be very, very helpful when you are trying to work with a, a wound or a burn. So I hope that is helpful a little bit there. We've also already covered this one, but it's worth repeating. The reason the sepsis frequencies are so important is that because when we have any of these bacteria enter the bloodstream, it can go right to our different organ systems and be very infectious and septic. So please play as many things as you can to keep your, your body as clean as possible. Yeah, again, I like to cover other ideas because it is so important. Sometimes it's not just one idea that works. It might be uh, several ideas. So um, scar healing ointment, burns and scar healing. So this is one that I saw with essential oils. And I don't know that I have used this one in particular. I've used lavender and peppermint together in coconut oil, but I don't believe I've added the maluca. But this just had a great recipe. It was very specific, three drops, three drops, three drops, and in coconut oil. So, and it said to directly put it on the burn area or the problem area. So you can find some more recipes similar, and maybe you don't happen to have these. Keep looking. You can look on the internet. There's lots of information about oils for any particular idea. And I just love essential oils because they're frequencies. All right, they're frequencies. They're very high frequencies. Obviously, they're not acoustical frequencies. So by using the essential oils plus the wave watch, you've got a couple of different ways to use frequencies for uh, taking care of yourself. This is a doTERRA recipe. Now, a couple other ideas that came up that I wanted to share with you. Um, there's lots of ideas on the natural uh, wound support, but there's confusion also. So I did have a picture earlier on first, second, third, and fourth degree burns. Obviously, you're going to go to the doctor with a set third and fourth. But the first and second degree, we've already talked about aloe vera being very helpful. And very well health is where I got this information from, says honey. Now, they don't make any specifications. And then calendula is another one that they talked about. But I saw later that only you should use raw honey only. And some other site went to the uh, depth of saying medical honey. 
only use medical honey. Don't even know what that is. So I couldn't find it either. Now, my brother is a beekeeper, and I can tell a difference in his honey when it's raw versus the honey that's at the grocery store that's supposed to be raw. They are pasteurizing it. They're doing a lot more things to it. And I can see that that's not going to be as helpful in your healing. So if you're going to try to put honey on a wound, you know, just as a very quick idea, uh, make sure that it's a raw honey, natural honey, or quote unquote, a medical honey, which is a new term to me. Uh, so I think that's that's pretty much it. I just wanted to let you know that we need to be aware of these and kind of have a repertoire of ideas in our um, in the back of our mind, you know, when something happens very quickly like this. And again, last night was the perfect example. Now, another time in Kansas City that was, uh, you know, this was applicable was when the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> won the Super Bowl. The firecrackers all over town were unbelievable. And I don't have a statistic on, you know, how much that, uh, uh, how many wounds happened from that. But just that um, we definitely had some firecrackers going off. So please be aware of, you know, some things that can be helpful to use on the Wave Watch. So I'll take this time. I stop sharing uh, my screen and I'll answer a few questions. And then if anybody else has a few questions or has any testimonies, I think uh, one that I didn't uh, get in here, uh, my assistant was going to text and I'll see if it came through yet and read that text to you. Um, and that's very, very important. So anyway, basically what I'm saying is that uh, she was going to uh, let me know that one of her sons had had a, a burn and it was really hurting him. And actually they did something that I wouldn't suggest very often, but they put the wave watch without any straps on it in his sock and he played soccer with the wave watch in his sock and uh when he got done everything seemed to be really good and he was basically almost crying before he started the gate and then when he, they put the wave watch on i'm not sure exactly which one she was playing i think it was inflammation pain and trauma but don't quote me on that uh and that turned out really well and i was just glad that you know he sur survived the soccer game without a broken watch you know and then the other one, uh, her uh, son had a puncture wound and she was doing all kinds of things and uh, different uh, essential oils and uh, different ointments and things like that and started using the Wave Watch. And when she did use it for regeneration and, and healing, there was a huge changeover. So that was a really good idea, too, also. So a couple more uh, ideas or anybody? Yes, somebody mentioned the, the Manuka honey is very good. And maybe that's considered a medical grade honey. Uh, oh, oh, you did say that. And I'm reading your whole statement is considered medical honey. But, you know, they don't tell you that quite a lot. Uh, so that's a good one. And someone's asking if they'll have access to the recording. Yes, it will come up in just a little bit on the Wave Watch Facebook uh, frequency fanatics. And uh, I do not have the affiliate program anymore. It's on hold. If you were lucky enough to get started uh, when I first started, uh, it's still continuing for those people. But at this point, I'm not really uh, continuing with an affiliate program. There we go. Uh, and someone did say perfect connection of marching over the bridge. Yeah, that's one that just amazed me too. So, um, any other comments, uh, please just unmute yourself and add if you'd like to uh, share a testimony, have a question, um, or just say, happy Independence Day. <laughs> Linda, this is Vicki. Sure. Uh, something I've used, I noticed oh. on a lot of the charts that it mentioned antibiotic cream, and I just try not to use that for my own reasons, but I use colloidal silver a lot for different things like that. And it really makes a difference. 
not perfect. Everybody, not everybody has that on hand, but anyway. I started put that in because that's what I would have said too. And then of course I saw some negative ideas about using a silver colloidal cream. Don't know exactly, you know, where the yes or no is on that. And, you know, we're bombarded all the time because something does work just like vitamin C, you know, we're told that doesn't do any good or vitamin E, that kind of vitamin D, you know, uh, people start talking about it and then all of a sudden it isn't any good, you know, and it's very negative. So that's kind of how I was feeling about the colloidal silver, but I'm glad that you brought that up. Yes. So if you have some colloidal silver, there's sprays, there's creams, and I do like and use those. Lynn, uh, Linda, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, Linda okay. from Tennessee. Yeah. I've used colloidal silver for probably 40 years. I never am without it. And if like you burn your arm, you know, reaching into the oven and just immediately put it on there and it actually heals it in no time. And also if you drink something uh, that is too hot and you burn your tongue, then just spray colloidal silver on your tongue and then just put your mouth together and actually it's gone within less than five minutes. Um, that it's just an amazing rejuvenation uh, product. But there's many books out on colloidal silver and the properties um, in many, many ways to heal, bruising, lots of things. So, And that has been my general concept. But like I said, I just saw something really negative and I thought, oh gosh, I don't know if I want to you know, bring that up today, but I'm glad everybody else has had good results with it because uh, to me, the silver is amazing. And don't forget that silver has a huge history. It started back in uh, the Roman times and they say that they actually put uh, silver bars in their spas and baths and things like that because it would uh, help with keeping the water clean. That was their method of clean water. And they were known for their unbelievable, you know, waterworks and spas and things like that. And I think they were also, um, you know, known for having guards at those spas and baths because of their silver bars. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Linda, can I ask a quick question again? You went through, yeah. you went through the sequence about where to find the um, skin regeneration and collagen and so on. And I thought I was following you, but darn it, I can't find them on my Wave Watch. We've got two different versions. We've got the one with the TRT and we've got the one with the WAV files, but I can't find it on either one. So uh, there are some people. older watches. So it, if you have any watch that since, uh, Probably the end of December, 1st of January, that one would have the skin uh, regeneration folder or restore folder on it. So if your watch is older than that, it may not have that. Uh, okay. But we're trying to we're trying to get that taken care of. And uh, fairly soon, we'll have the availability to order a um, new TF card. And then you'll have more and more frequencies on it. So Wonderful. give me another week or so. That'll be coming out. And I'll probably announce it next week and let you know how you can get that. Or you Thank can be you so watching much. on we could be Thank watching you because on because none of our watches have it. We were we were early adopters and love every bit of it. But I was like, wait, where where are these frequencies? I've never <laughs> seen any frequencies. Wonderful. So we'll just be able to swap out the chip when when yes. you make it available. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Linda, unfortunately, I cracked my um, face of my watch, and I'm going to have to send it back. Is there any kind of protective covering that we can buy for the top of the watch? Yes, we do have that now, and the newer watches come out included with that protective case on them. So because uh, I've only had mine since May, but I now, yours yours probably is in the case then. A lot of people have been missing it. If you just got it, they've been out for four months oh, or something. Oh, so goodness. people, what people are missing, I don't know if you can see, but inside your case is a little black velvet bag. And that's where the screen cover is tucked into. And some people are missing that. I so, did. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so you. the screen. The screen cover should be in there with the uh, uh, the cord for it. They were uh, packed in there together. But if you've already cracked yours, uh, you know, let us know and uh, 
contact info at wavewatch.com. Okay. That's the best area. Okay, I think Beth Ann. Go ahead, Beth Ann. I just wanted to say thank you for sharing today in regards to healing wounds um, and why they're taking so long to heal. And you are absolutely correct regarding the EMFs. I'm realizing I've, I've got multiple bug bites and they're not healing as fast as they should have been. So yes, I've recognized that a lot here. Isn't that amazing? You know, they're saying it's the EMS or even quote unquote, possibly burning our cells from the inside out, you know, very slowly, but so much information there. So people should pay attention and you don't want to be wearing something on your wrist that's hooked to the internet. That's such a hard concept for some people to learn, uh, but very scary. You know, I have women come in and they've got their you know, I'm going to say a brand, they, they've got the Fitbit or their Apple watch on or whatever. They're connected to the internet all day long. And uh, they're just pulling in negative frequencies and they're, they're starting to feel it and people will be telling them, but it takes them a little time sometimes to get off of that. And then the cutest one ever, I have a lady that comes in and she does have a Fitbit on. And I kind of looked at her and I'm going, hmm, I didn't know you'd wear one of those. And she says, well, it's kind of, I'm in between. She said, my children gave me this and I have to wear it, but it doesn't mean I have to turn it on. It's never been turned on. (laughs) It's a fake Fitbit is how she said it. It was so cute that she was trying to, you know, uh, appreciate the effort that her family had gone to and slowly teach them that it was a little bit negative, but she was not actually turning it on. All right. So any other ideas? Brad, go ahead. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Linda, when you ship the uh, the new EFT cards, am I going to be able to get one but since I'm in Canada and you don't ship to Canada? Well, we do ship to Canada. No, we just don't ship overseas. We do ship to Canada. Well, well, you don't ship the Wave Watch to Canada, though. No, I ship lots of them. What? I'm sorry, I'm not sure what's going on there. I wanted to get one from Canada, and I said, and I was told we don't ship to Canada. Oh, well, I'm not sure what happened there, but we do ship to Canada. Takes a little bit longer. So just go online and order it. We'll get you on shipped. Right. Okay. Great. I'm so Thank I'm you. so glad you were on. Yeah. So we don't ship to the UK. We're starting to try to get international and I'm having to hire some more support staff, somebody that knows how to do that. And we'll see if we can get some actual international shipping set up, but we do ship to Canada. Wow. Okay. But what, what about Amazon? Amazon is a great place to buy things. They take care of the shipping and everything and and you just stock them up, I guess. I don't know how it works on your end, but it's uh, that one oh, hasn't worked. For, that one hasn't worked for me yet. So, oh, is that uh, right? Yeah. Oh, oh. I mean, you have to stock them, and I have to be very, very careful of the batteries. Is the reason why, Brad? So. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, thank you. If, thank the, you. if the batteries sit there for you know seven months in a warehouse, they're going to be depleted. So we keep them in our warehouse and make sure that they are changed appropriately so that we don't have trouble with the batteries and once in a while we still do so that's why amazon is not used very much at this point in time you know okay okay thank you Mm -hmm. oh beth ann again thank you linda um any chance of designing like a raincoat for this wave watch? I'm not sure what you mean by that, but we're always adding to it. And we are uh, looking at uh, putting something in here that might be the raincoat that you're talking about, just a little cover for this edge right yes. here. So, yeah. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, I think we're kind of winding down unless anybody has anything else. I hope you're using your Wave Watch and I know most of you are. And I'm so glad to catch up with Brad if for some reason we had messed up and said we didn't ship to Canada. I'm not sure what happened there, but my apologies, Brad. And thank you so much for getting on. Well, I, um, I did get one through a friend of a friend of a friend who lives in oh. the United States. 
It was took okay. me like a month to get it, but I did get it. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Linda. Yes. Uh, this is Janie. And I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but it's been a good idea for me. I've had such a time with these legs that I was talking about. And everything wants to react with me. I'm very allergic to everything, I guess. But I found out the best cleaning solution was baking soda water. Ah, oh, I read on the point to share. about that, that it was one of the oldest things on the market to, for antiseptic type cleaning and stuff. And I tell you, that has helped me faster than anything I've tried. None of the things that I had bought any place that was supposed to be so great didn't work near as good as this baking soda water. So if somebody's having for trouble internally too, you know, right. it's great. So if somebody's yeah. having trouble getting things to heal, try that. <laughs> Lovely idea. And you know, um we as a younger generation, we thought we were learning so much more than our parents and our grandparents. Yet what I am finding out is just what you said, Janie, that we should be going back to what they taught us. I remember gargling with salt water. I remember using baking soda. I remember using vinegar for a sunscreen you know? And so all of those kind of things, we've actually went downhill on. We should go back to those simple, simple ideas that we were taught, hopefully by our parents or grandparents. And so that just kind of brings that idea up. Yeah, we need to be a little bit more astute and not think that we have to have, you know, sunscreen on, which is full of chemicals and that kind of thing, you know. So great point, Janie. Anybody else have any other old fashioned ideas that we ought to be using? You know, the salt, the baking soda, vinegar. I don't have an old fashioned idea right now, Linda, but I do have a little bit of a testimony if you have time for that. Sure, sure. Okay, well, this regards my husband, Don. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer and has gone through radiation. And the doctors kept asking him, why, why do you think you're doing so well? And of course he had on his wave watch and I had programmed a, um, a list of favorites in there to relate to that. And so he shared with them about that and they were very interested. And then the medical oncologist that he met with for the final time when he was deemed cancer free, he said, I, you know, I don't really know why you're doing so well. And so Don, of course we know prayer was the, reason always but also he showed him his wave watch and he also was very interested and wanted information about the wave watch and about you but then the only side effect he continues to have which he will have for quite a while is hot flashes and so I thought well what the heck so I got the watch out and I went into menopause under women and found the hot flashes and I put it on a loop and he wore it and he can sleep through the night now without any hot flashes. And it works not 100% all day long, but very, very well. And he's just, he's just thrilled. <laughs> so the doctors, now the doctors know why. I know you had sent me that testimony and I really appreciate it, but I really appreciate you giving it, uh, you know, on the Zoom call so that everybody could hear it at this point in time. It truly is amazing. And I, that is, that's a really fun thing on the, on the heat flashes, basically, because so many people do have that after their chemo. And so very important, their hormones are all messed up, you know, so I'm glad we have it there. Sorry, he has to go to the women, but uh, the women's <laughs> folder for that <laughs> hot flash <doesn't> idea. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care. That's right. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> any other ideas? And again, happy uh, Independence Day. Happy Fourth of July. So. All right. We are going to uh, kind of shut this down a little bit. Um uh, and we'll see you next week. I'll have to come up with a different topic. I've got over 60 now, like I've mentioned, and it's getting a little bit harder to think of a topic. So if anybody has something that they'd like to share or, or learn about or, you know, say, how do you use this with the Wave Watch? Just let me know. Send me an email and info 
at waywatch.com will get to me. Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, Linda. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Linda. You're welcome. Excuse the bird noises. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, birds are always fun. <laughs> I had five of them in my living room. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs>